What's up guys, my name is Renaissance, welcome back to the channel. So, what I've got here for you today, um, I'm actually going to be starting a Dark Souls 3 um, series. It's, it's going to be kind of like a walkthrough for maybe new players or players that have played through the game maybe a couple times but don't really know a lot about the game still, um, don't really know a lot about the lore and whatnot. Um, and it's also designed for maybe people who haven't played the first two Dark Souls, um, specifically Dark Souls 1. Primarily I'm doing this because, you know, Dark Souls Remastered is going to be out in a couple weeks. And I don't know, I, I just, I'm just now getting into the whole YouTube thing. Um, I finally have all the equipment that I think I need, so I'm still going to be like tinkering with it here and there. But, um, yeah, we're just going to try to do not 100% walkthrough of Dark Souls 3, but we're going to try to do a pretty good bit, try to get most of the stuff we can get in New Game. Um, we may go into New Game Plus, just depends on how much time we have. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to make these videos yet, so well, we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. Um, disclaimer, I'm not amazing at Dark Souls, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, I'm, I'm okay, yeah, but I'm not, I'm, I would to describe myself probably as a casual so um we're gonna go here i this is on my new pc so um i don't have i only got these two guys level 9 and 15 so i haven't done anything really um just except for like tinkering around with the uh the settings the audio and the, the video and whatnot um i have this game on xbox one as well and that's where i've done i have hundreds of hours of gameplay into the game so I know a decent amount about it but we're just going to be going over the basics and the walkthrough kind of tutorial of the game and um, a little bit of lore mixed in um, so let's go to new game go ahead and create our character um, yes indeed we'll watch this I guess it is called Lothric where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Nah, that's probably not y'all. <laughs> when the link of fire is threatened, the bell tolls. Unearthing the old lords of Cinder from their graves. Aldrich, saint of the deep. Legion, the Abyss Watchers. And the reclusive Lord of the Profaned Capital. Yon the Giant. Kindled 
You know, I don't think I ever realized that that's the Firekeeper. Nameless, accursed, undead. Unfit even to be Cinder. And so it is... ...that Ash seeketh embers. So, pretty dope. Uh, intro to the game um, I've never really paid attention uh, too much but it's actually a beautiful intro I know they came out with that when the uh, game was being like pre-release hyped and everything but anyway we're gonna go ahead and create our character here so <coughs> uh, we're gonna do a mail um, our name is gonna be I don't even know. I'm trying to think. What would be a good name? Artemis Gordon is what I usually go with, but I accidentally named that for the female character already. Um, so we'll just name him... Uh, Supreme Overlord. Oh, I can't. So this guy... This is actually the toughest decision of my life. Uh, we're just gonna name him. Marcus. No. Help me out, guys. <laughs> He'll just be called Hero of Ash. <laughs> Make it easy. Um, so these classes right here are basically, um, there we go, Knight, Mercenary. Knight's going to start with the best armor um, out of any starting character. Uh, stats will be kind of skewed towards, towards strength builds with uh, good equip load. Mercenary, they're going to be a little bit more dex focused. Uh, they actually start with a really good sword, I believe. The, uh, is it the Twin Blades, I believe? Yeah. Warrior. Um, this is just going to be like pure strength and health pool. Um, Herald's going to have a little bit of faith and a little, like, an even amount of strength. Um, starts with pretty good stuff. I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, Whatever the thing he's got, but um, thieves gonna start with a bandit's knife. They're gonna have high dex. Um, assassins gonna also have high dex. They're gonna start with a parrying shield and a rapier. Uh, sorcerer obviously is gonna be high int. Pyromancer is gonna be int and faith, so they can cast pyromancies. Cleric's gonna be basically just faith, um, and then of course the classic deprived. Um, because this is a walkthrough for newer players, um, I'm going to be playing it as if I was a newer player, just to give you a, a idea of how you probably want to do your first playthrough, or um, even if you've done a playthrough, you just want a little bit more um, more to it than that. So we're going to just start as a knight, just because A, they have the best armor out of all the starting characters, and B, they have a 100% block, uh, physical block shield, which is amazing <laughs> for the early game um, burial gifts basically all of these are kind of garbage and you can get all of this stuff normally in game including the one I'm gonna pick which is gonna be the young white branch um, for new players I'd really recommend picking this up I'm not gonna spoil why I'll explain it when the time comes but um, branch of a young white birch perhaps an offering of peace can be used to blend into the environment but only once um, so we're going to take that and basically never use it. Um, life ring, I'll, I'll go over these you know, really quickly. Life ring just gives you a little bit more HP, but not very much. Divine blessing, uh, it's a one use item. It'll fully restore your HP and cure any uh, like disease, not diseases, but like poison or toxic. Um, hitting blessing fully restores your FP. Black fire bombs, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you just throw a little fire bomb at enemies. Fire gem lets you infuse a weapon uh, with fire. 
Sovereign of Soul just get it's a soul item that just gives you a couple souls. Um, rusted gold coin. It's actually not a bad starting item either. Um, can help you with farming. It gives you better item discovery for a, a short amount of time. Cracked Red Eye Orb. Um, that's going to be for invasions. So um, you can invade other players. But we're going to start with a uh, Young White Branch. Face presets. Uh, I'm not going to go in here and do much with this. I do like to be very slim though. Um, I'm not going to change much of this though just because uh, I don't really care that much about character creation stuff. Um, little detail. The only thing I like to change usually is my hair. And we don't really want to give him girl's hair. That looks a little strange. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give him that. Hair color. Brown. That's what my hair looks like in real life. So um, We'll give him a little beard. That's probably what mine looks like in real life as well. Um, this is not going to be what my pupils look like in real life, but I do always love uh, changing the color of your pupils. Just makes it look kind of cool. Yeah, so that's all we're going to do here. So, um, as you see, we didn't change it much. But we're going to finalize creation. And we're going to start our game with uh, Hero of Ash. Who doesn't actually have a name. Because I can't think of one. So as you can tell right off the rip, we are in a cemetery. Um, the reason being is we are an undead. So we have died as a human. We have died. And now we are, because we are now an undead, we are going to rise again. So like I said, I am playing on PC, so it's, uh, it's pretty beautiful, honestly. Um, I haven't really gotten into it too good yet to know exactly how the graphics are going to look, but just uh, the couple first areas that I've been to with those other characters, um, just to test it out, uh, it's pretty, pretty gorgeous, honestly. Um, so all these are just messages. I need to put on here to... Not start the game in online mode because we don't we don't want to play in online. Uh, play offline. Yeah. So these are just uh, messages from the developer. Um, I'm playing with an Xbox One controller, so that's why you're gonna see like RT for strong attack and uh, you know A and whatnot. So this is our first enemy in the game, and it's just a basic hollow. Um, they have pretty standard movesets. They can attack pretty fast. Um, but basically, you just lock on to them and... Oh, well, I try to parry them. I'm trying to parry them, but it's not working. But you, can, you can kill the hollow pretty easily. Um, so what, what he just dropped is a soul item. So this is just a consumable you can use to get more souls, which in the top right corner up there, you can tell, you can see I have 24 souls. That's basically the currency of the game, and it's also what you use to level your character up. So this fading soul is just the soul of a corpse. Um, let the firekeeper transform this sovereign, the soul, into a source of strength. So and I believe that's what's uh, back here as well. Again, these are just developer messages telling you the uh, controls of the game, basically. Oh, that is actually beautiful, though, that water. I've never noticed that before. That is awesome. This game, God, this game is so freaking beautiful. It really is. So you see this guy. He looks just all kinds of depressed. One good right trigger attack will tear him up so 
that is an Ashen Estus Flask. So this is new for Dark Souls 3, but basically um, what it does is that blue bar at the top left up there, that is our, our FP. So that's what we use to cast, uh, well, for one, that's what we use to do our weapon arts, which are like special moves with the weapon. As you can see, it's going down up there. But primarily, um, that FP is used to cast spells and miracles and such. So, see this poor chap didn't quite make out so well, did he? Hmm. This is going to teach you how to backstab, right? Oh, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. So you can just walk up behind this guy. Um, now, I have not played this game in a, in a while. Like, really played it. Uh, I'm pressing the wrong button. <laughs> I have not played this game in a while, so it's going to be hard for me to remember some stuff. I just failed, typically. But I'm going to try to do my best to remember as much as I can. Now, I definitely remember what's back here. So, for those of you who are unaware, um, I, don't have, I don't have a good gesture. Basically, Dark Souls or Souls games tend to, at the very beginning of the game, put an enemy that you can fight near the beginning that for for new players will probably kill you. Um, they're going to be too strong for somebody who's never played the game before. But I have played the game quite a bit, so I am going to take this enemy on. Um, what it is is a ravenous crystal lizard. So, so it's a crystal lizard that has deformed over the years and become this giant beast. So the best way to take care of this guy really is to just kind of circle around them. Ow. That's really the main attack you have to watch out for. Uh, apparently the tail whip too. He's normally not that bad, but if you hit him with enough two-handed attacks, he will stab it. friend there we go so he staggered we got the repose so repose is a lot, a lot of damage as you can tell like i said the best way to handle this guy is just to ride right up on his on his butt there He just guard broke the crap out of me. So what we got is a Titanite scale. So what that does is allow us to reinforce special weapons to plus four, basically. So um, Titanite altered by soul. Um, in rare cases, crystal lizards devour souls, growing to monstrous proportion and leaving these great scales. So that is awesome. And as you can see down there in the bottom right corner, um, we got 4,000 souls from that too, which is also really nice. Um, all these blood stains. These are people that have not quite made it against the ravenous crystal lizard, unfortunately. Oh, poor guys. So we're going to run back here. That guy's actually a lot easier than um, I, I may have made it look. You literally just hug him and two-hand your weapon when you're attacking, and when he attack, like right before he attacks, just pull your shield out and hold blocker. You can dodge it, dodge roll it if you're quick enough. But my reaction time is pretty garbage. So, God, look at this friggin' view. So this up here is Lothric Castle. Um, this is basically the end of the game area right here. This is where we're going to end up. 
And it's really interesting. You kind of wonder, makes you wonder looking at it like that, what exactly is... I mean, is this thing just built into the side of the mountain, or... I don't know. I mean, it's hard to tell. What's holding it here? A lot of speculators from... Uh, who played Dark Souls 1, um, thinking about Lordron, would would maybe think that the great trees, the, the like the great hollow trees, are holding this city up onto this mountain. Because um, we can't see below there. We don't know. Like, obviously, that part over there, it looks like Castle is on top of the mountain. But I don't know about that, though. <laughs> Oh, this area is gorgeous. That is our goal for right now of what we're trying to get to. Um, that is Firelink Shrine. Um, for those of you who played Dark Souls 1 or have played Dark Souls 3 before, you know what Firelink Shrine is. It's, it's, it's a hub world, basically. It's where all your NPCs will end up. That's where you'll end up um, hundreds of times to level up and whatnot. So that's where we're going to. You can see the path to get there. You just go down there through the door there's a special someone waiting right there which might be able to uh, no not quite let's see if you can get a glimpse of them but that's where we're going so um, this is a bonfire so you just use this to get all your uh, Estes back oh we got a gesture too get all your Estes back and later on you'll be able to warp um, between bonfires so now, later on, I mean, it's very soon, so. So, he's got a couple hollows right here. Um, you want to watch out for this guy. Not not for this guy, but you want to watch out for just, like, chasing him. Because there's actually a little ambush right here that they, they just kind of wake up. So. And sometimes they do drop salt items. Oh! Point in case. These little hollows, they like the ambush. I tell you. Again, there's another little, not an ambush, but a little trap waiting down here. As you can see right here. So you want to just let that guy bounce right off your shield. Um, your shield's not going to be able to block 100% uh, fire damage. So those fire areas will hurt you a little bit. But Down here we get some fire bombs. Which, basically, it's just a bisque iron filled with black powder. Um... So it explodes when you when you throw them. Those are actually incredibly useful for a uh, for you could either use them on this boss coming up, or you can use them on an enemy later in the game that will make it a lot easier to pass an area. So so now this I always screw this up. This is a jump right here, and I never know where to jump to land where you need to land. So we're gonna try right. Oh my god, I actually did it. That is just a tight tight shard. Why don't you try a plunging attack? You don't say. Just jump down and press attack. So we've already been down there. There he is. So this is our uh, first boss, if you will. This is Udex Gundir. And he is not hard, but for new players, he may pose a problem. Um, he's not going to trigger automatically your first time coming in here. So you can walk around and get a sense of scale for the place. I mean, are we in the Himalayas or the Alps? I mean, I don't know. Another view of Lothric. I mean, look at that. That is just gorgeous, man. Should have gotten a PC years ago. <laughs> Does not look that dope on Xbox, I can assure you. And we're going to go up there, too, eventually. That very tip top. We will be there at some point. But for now, we're going to fight Udix Gundir. So you can get a good look at his, uh, his, at his mug there. Um... What is that? I don't know what that is. But he's got pretty cool armor. And as you can see, he's got this giant sword 
stabbed through his uh, through his heart. It looks like, and got some kind of some kind of cancer or something going on here. Not sure what it is, but let's just let's take the sword out for our friend. Now you're gonna want to start attacking this guy immediately when you take that sword out. That will do damage, even though he doesn't have a health bar. The thing with Udix Gundir is to just ride him close to the chest. Now, I did not do a very good job there. But if you stay close and to the right side of him, really the only attacks that are going to really hit you is if he jumps up in the air. And even then, He just missed it. Yeah. He'll look pretty good. Yeah. But he's, you can see, he's pretty easy. You just have to hug his hip. That's many, many bosses in Dark Souls. Um, not necessarily Dark Souls 3. There is a, a lot of different strategies in this game, particularly. But in Dark Souls games in general, you just hug their hip and circle around them, and you'll usually do pretty good. Um, so as you can see, it said uh, fire, uh, Ember Restored. Um, do you see our body is like glowing red? There's like little red ash in there. Um, and in the top left corner up there um, of our screen, uh, that symbol is like embered up too so when you defeat a boss um, or you can actually pick up which we don't have one you can actually pick up embers when you defeat a boss you become embered again and what this means is you are human so you're not undead currently you're human um, and you can be invaded by other players and you can invade other players so and you get a little bit more HP as well so I can't show you right now but um, my max HP is 590 if before that Udix Gunder fight, my max HP was probably 540 or something. So, I'm going to light like this bonfire. Go ahead and rest here, and it should be named yep, Udix Gunder for the boss that we just killed. So, let's enter the Ireland Shrine area, shall we? Oh, the view. So this is a broken straight sword. Um, this thing is basically trash. Um, new players will never want to use this, but um, no exceptional qualities. Only a mad hollow would choose to fight with this. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty pretty bad. Does not do much damage, as you can see. One ten plus fourteen on our long sword. 70 plus 7 on the broken straight sword, so we're gonna avoid that for now. Hello, friend. Oh, I don't have my derp. So we could kill that one, but you can just drop down here and sneak up on him before this one ever even wakes up. I forgot what this is. A green blossom or an ember, maybe? No, Homeward Bones. So, Homeward Bones, um, basically, they just let you return to the uh, last bonfire you rested at or the shrine. So it's a bone fragment reduced to white ash. Return to last bonfire used for resting or to the shrine. Bonfires are sustained by bones of the undead. In rare cases, their previous owner's strong urge to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a homeward instinct. So that's pretty dope. So that's like somebody, another undead's bone, basically. So this is just like, this isn't necessarily the tutorial area, but this is just an area where you can kind of explore a little bit before you really get into the game. You can take care of these hollows fairly easily. Nothing really over there going on. Um, so this area coming up, we're going to avoid this for right now, but this area coming up, 
Uh, I, like I said, I've not played this in a while, so I may, like, royally screw this up, but there is a guy, you can see him right there in the middle of the screen, that he, it's an NPC, um, not, in, not a friendly NPC either. Um, this is another one of those cases of an enemy that the developers put at the beginning of the game um, to basically lure you into fighting it, knowing that you probably can't handle it. Um, but we're going to try to fight him anyway. There is a cheeky way to kill him, and I'm going to try to demonstrate that. I may fail. We'll find out. Um, this right here is the east-west shield. We'll check it out. It's not very good, though. Um, it's a wooden shield decorated with the ancient symbol of the two-headed eagle, close to a small shield in size. Um, basically, you can parry with it, but it's, as you can see, like not even remotely as good as our night shield not even close so we're gonna try to fight this guy we're not actually gonna try to fight him we're gonna try to cheese him you'll see what I mean so he's gonna run he's gonna chase us that did not work <laughs> we might have to try to fight him I don't know not working out well. Ooh, he's got some amazing poise. And that stance he does, he will carry you in that stance, so you don't want to do your regular attack. He's got some mad range. Trying to get him to come over here. Whew. And he has slashed us into bits and pieces. Which is fine. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, that is fine. We will come back to him and we will crush him. So, so when you die, you just spawn at the uh, last bonfire that you rested at. So we don't have to go very far to get back to him. We, we're not going to fight him again right now. We're just going to get back to him so we can get our souls. Because like I said, I'm trying to give maybe those without much experience a better way to learn how to play this game. So... There's a, there's a couple cheeky ways you can fight this dude, and one of the ways I was trying to do right there was to get him to just fall off the, the edge of the map, um, but that didn't work out. But there is another cheeky way. First, I'm going to go get my souls. Yeah, he won't chase us. No. go up here there should be a couple items up here an ember so an ember is that that's that our top left uh you know thing was embered so remember how we had 590 max health now we have 454 so it's a big chunk so these embers um no one kindle can ever truly claim the embers that burn within a champion's bosom which is precisely what makes their yearning for warmth so keen um it basically just allows you to be human and play online. To so, like get invaded and invade other people online. It's another homeward bone. Should be a yeah puppy. So dogs on this game are actually like straight up trash. They're terrible to fight. That one was easy to kill, but yeah, look at that thing. Yeah, so cute and cuddly. Oof. It's the stuff nightmares are made out of, right? So we're going to go in here. And this is Firelink Shrine. 
Oh, look at that item. However will we get that, I wonder. So we're gonna we're gonna hang out in Firelink for a few minutes. Talk to this lovely young lady here. First we're gonna put the that cold sword that we got from Udix Gun Deer in here. Um, what this is gonna do is become our primary bonfire and it's gonna let us teleport to other bonfires. How did you die right here? Who are you fighting? I don't understand. Alright, so and this will also let us warp to the next bonfire, High Wall of Lothric, but we're not gonna do that right now. There's a lot to do here. So we're gonna talk to this girl first. This is the Shrine Handmaid. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. Oh, you don't say. Uh, so, not the Shrine Handmaid, the excuse me. Left shrine homes, Bonfire and Keeper. must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Farewell, Ash May the Flame. Alright. <clears throat> oh, did you see that cute little curtsy? Ash Pretty, the mark to Loth. So she's basically telling us Very the same well. thing the uh, the beginning thing then told us the to, to return the lords me. to their throne. But nourishment from the she is also the character that levels us up. So that is what we're going to do first. We're going to get some HP, some strength, some dex, get a, more, a little bit more HP. Yeah, so we're, we, we've leveled up a little bit now. Um, I'll go over... Let me go over these levels right well. quick. So from the level up screen, you can really get a good idea of everything that's going on here. And you can see what what stats affect what other stats. So Vigor. Well, we'll you know what? We'll come back to this once we uh, level up again. These are all signs by players. So jumping ahead. You bastard. That's one thing I've never realized about this lady. She's a, her feet don't even touch the, the ground. Anyway, this is the Shrine Handmaid. She will buy and sell us items. I am but a humble handmaid of the Shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is I want, no? <laughs> so, yes, she will... We can buy items from her. Um, we will be buying stuff from her, but not right now. Um... But yeah, you buy stuff from her. You can also sell her things. Um, I, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. This is good old Andre. He is a blacksmith. And as you can see, he is in the process of what's called hollowing, which is where you basically... Those things we were fighting at the beginning of the game, those are hollows. They were once people... Then they became undead, and then they hollowed and turned into zombies. Andre is uh, working his way there as well. So. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me, I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large. But when, oh, when they do. So he's just they, so, talking smack right now enough. by saying what we need. But if you keep talking to him, you'll get a gesture. You'll get the. Pretty be careful. The hurrah gesture. So we'll uh, test that out here. Yay. <laughs> Don't seem so excited about it. <laughs> and then there's two more NPCs here. 
Um, that's Ludlith of Cortland up there. He is actually a Lord of Cinder. So, we're one-fifth of the way there already, guys. <laughs> All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ludlith of Cortland. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child cause. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. So we actually got a pretty good bit of information there from Ludlith. So, as you can see, he doesn't have a uh, he doesn't have legs. Um, he also is wearing a crown, um, which kind of backs up his uh, his claim that he is in fact a Lord of Cinder. Uh, he doesn't really look like one, does he? But um, in fact, what he just told us is that all of the Lords of Cinder became Lords of Cinder because they linked the flame they link the fire which is kind of what our goal is in this game um, so we are kind of trying not necessarily to become a lord of cinder but we are trying to link the flame like those before us have done no style of our purpose five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire the fast-fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is, I became a lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a colossus. So, Ludless telling us that... <laughs> what our goal is or what all the undeads goal is is to link the fire as a reenactment of the very first linking of the flame so for those of you unaware of dark souls one lore this a lot of this game ties back to dark souls one so there is a the the god of all gods he's, he's called the sun god gwen basically he's the first person or entity, I guess, to have ever linked the flame, maybe? So, Gwyn linked the flame, the f and it's called the First Flame, because he linked it, and started the Age of Fire. Um, so, what Ludlitz just told us is that we need to reenact that. Um, since that time, the fire has been linked multiple times, but he was the first. No style of... Yes. A so, I may be but... So, that's all for Ludlith right now. We'll come back to him later. This guy, this is our friend. This is Hawkwood, the Crestfallen Warrior. Um, as you can see, he looks really sad. That's why he's called a Crestfallen Knight. So we're going to talk to him. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding throne. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> so he's he's super sad, so he gave us the uh, the collapse gesture, which is just beautiful. This is how Dark Souls will make you feel. <laughs> it's very accurate. Anything else to say, Hawkwood? Uh, well, you can, I mean, we uh, don't. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> so, I think that's going to be all um, for this episode. I'm trying to keep these you know, around 45 minutes or so. Um, but this, yeah, this is Firelink Shrine. So, we, there's a couple more things we need to do here. Um, before we proceed to the next area and we will do that whenever we come back so um, once again my name is Renaissance. Uh, if you like the video please make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and we will see you next time goodbye